Welcome to Raven Silver. Please subscribe to my channel. Also hit the notification bell, like this video, and share. This video is dedicated to trans attracted men, and I don't mean tranny chasers. Tranny chasers are people who just have sex with you, and they want to check out your body, have sex with your friends. They're not really interested in being with you. They just want to have sex with you. But this is to the trans attracted men. Forgive us. Because we didn't set out time to teach you what it's like to be with us. There are levels to being a trans woman which we forgot the steps we had to take to get there. We forgot. We hear all the negative things that people say about you behind the scenes and we don't like it. So let me just tell you this. Stay strong. Stand in your truth. Because one thing about it, we hear everything. We watch how they tell you to come on out, stand in your truth. But today, I want you to choose yourself. Don't listen to anything anybody negative has to say. I want you to stand in your truth. We, as two spirit women, need you, want you, and love you to be around. And at the end of the day, we forgot a lot of things that going from one world to another world is very different for you. Things you're not going to understand what the hell is going on. Why is this thing happening to you? You look at another woman, you say woman. So guess what? Today we see you. We love you and we need you. So at the end of the day, forgive us for not telling you all that happened to go in order to be with us. So forgive us and stand strong because this too shall pass. Welcome to the What's up? What's up? How you doing? How you been? What's going on? What's good? Are you getting it in? Somebody getting it for you? What's going on, people? Subscribe to my channel. What's going on, people? It is the day of another day. Of another day that we call Saturday, and it would have been said, What's going on, people? Hopefully, everybody's doing everything as far as being safe in this world and living in and knocking down doors and making your dreams come true and practicing ignore. Now, I want to share something with you and practice to a lot of trans attractive men that's basically our talk to behind the scenes and the struggle of being who they are, living in their truth. <clears throat> Now, of course, this is not every two-spirit man, a well, not two-spirit man, but trans-attracted man, it is a man, of course, cis man, that basically like girls like us, and I want to share this with you only because a lot of them, trans-attracted men, really struggle behind the scenes. Now, I'm going to share this story with you, and we're going to read this story, but it's a whole, it's many others, but I'm just going to talk about one, and it's a real-life reality, not allegedly, just really life there was one split in time I used to work in southern New York and stuff and I met a guy inside the bar which is a gay bar in New York City I talked about this before now we basically got along really well everything was fine and stuff like that and we talked and stuff we exchanged numbers he told me to watch his stuff he was going to come back and pick it up I mean I, I told you this story before but he left his um he left his um his music and everything with me he went out um in New York okay so he's like well could you watch it for me I got his phone and stuff so then he didn't get back on time for me when I got off I think he thought I was getting off late probably early in the morning but I got off at a certain time the night for the second shift to come in so clearly he thought I was gonna be there late but he just went out and left so I was working of course he couldn't stick around the bar because I was working I can't be socializing having him here when I have a whole bunch of people who make money, you know, the customers. So, the thing is, we talk, um, I called them up once I got home and stuff, and I called them, I said, well, where are you? I have your earphones and stuff here with your radio and stuff. Now, he lives in, he lives with me by me. In fact, he lives exactly about four or five thousand feet from me, <laughs> literally. I didn't know this at the time, but we already talked about living in the same place in Jersey, so, he basically said, okay, where you live? I told him where I live. He said, okay, fine. Now, I had no idea he lived that close to me, like a block over. So the thing is, he came to pick up his stuff and stuff like that. And he was like, the relationship could have went further. But the fact that I lived too close, he dissolved the relationship. Even though when they got to the relationship, we were talking. 
very positive. Then I noticed that he was a drug user and stuff. And I understand that when it comes down to people, sometimes they can deal with the reality because of what society and tell them that is not like them. They're supposed to do this. They consider them gay. That word gay makes a man good on drugs, beat up women, kill people. And at the end of the day, society says he just was crazy. But unfortunately, he got police for being something he wasn't. So, he came over to my house and stuff. We started talking to so him. I, no, I dropped his earphones and stuff up downstairs. And then the next time he said, I'm going to see you again. So he came into my house and we started talking. He said, I cannot be with you because certain people around this area talk too much. And he talked about a girl that lived in my building that he knows that she knew about me. Okay, quick story that. When um, I became, when I became the stupidest building and stuff, I'm at now, um, the girl was inside the building and the landlord outed me to her. She didn't know, but he outed me to her. So then she knew. Then all of a sudden I heard her say, you know, one person shared the noise, the noise around the whole neighborhood and it got to him about me. He knew exactly what he was talking about. And uh, and that's one other story. But the thing is that he couldn't deal with it. So, I noticed a little trend about him selling drugs on the street, stuff like that. And, you know, being around a whole bunch of guys and stuff, I know whether it was in or not. But the thing about it was I noticed the pattern that he just became less present. So bad that he started using the drugs, not only selling it, and started going down because of his attraction to people like me. And some of you said, well, maybe that was, but it was what it was. See, the thing is, sometimes people just want to get away from their body because nobody can really meet the real them. So they look for anything to try to leave themselves. They go to drugs alcohol, they date women, they beat up women. At the end of the day, I'm not sure how he did outside of that. We shared the conversation and stuff. He told me that he couldn't be with me because certain girls in his run their mouth too much. And he didn't feel comfortable, even though he liked me and stuff. Okay, fast, fast forward to last month. I didn't see him for a while. I'm assuming he got locked up. He saw me. He's with his friends, and this time he decided to speak to me on the streets, which I found to be surprising. And I think it's so sad that you go to prison to find out your truth and just stand in, it, in your truth. Because a lot of times, a lot of men don't seem to have the balls to stand up to what society says to them. And that's why everybody gets there differently. Everybody gets there different ways. And know those girls like us, we got there. We took us time to get to our truth. We have to give him that much time to get to his. Now, granted, I really didn't have much to say to him about that because I'm not the kind of person like this. I don't know where you're at in your life, and I'm not trying to be the, the mediator for you as far as your truth to understand it. But I notice a lot of times when it comes to the guys that's dating us, there is a pattern of getting high. They have to get so high, it becomes less present within themselves, and they're suffering. And I'm going to tell you why. They hear everything everybody says about us, and they relate it to themselves. You understand what I'm saying? They say, well, I can't believe them things, this and that and that. Now he's like, well, I'm with those things, but he's not going to say nothing. But he's taking it all in, all this negativity that they talk about us like a dog. And he have to self-medicate. And it bothers him so bad that he get on drugs, he drinks, he does everything. And I believe... Not all pieces. A lot of times, that's why they don't care. That's why they end up in prison. Then that's why they can finally be with their truth. And at the end of the day, they don't care anymore. So my trans attractive brothers, this is all I have to say to you is, it's only advice. If you had a child that was gay, and your child told you, Daddy, they always pick on me so bad and they're crying. As a parent, you become very protective and upset someone is harming your child. You become so strong, you become that child's hero. Because you're standing for up for your child. No, you're not going to do this to my child. Now let's just transfer this. That same energy you have for that child, you just say that same energy for you. You have to make yourself that child and fight for yourself. The same energy you would have went after anybody for messing with your baby is the same energy you need to use for yourself. Because at the end of the day, we're all headed to one place, and that's death. And a lot of those that are making fun of you, laughing at you, or doing it behind the scenes, if not worse. But unfortunately, 
Some of y'all gonna understand this message, some of y'all not, some of y'all are gonna find a way to critique it to make it seem like I'm just trying to get them on our side. And at the end of the day, no one is gonna come anywhere they don't wanna be left or go. But I know it is a process, and I know it takes time to get there. And I know as a two-spirit woman, it becomes very difficult to watch y'all suffer the way you suffer, especially if y'all don't know who to reach out to. Now, of course, you go to my Instagram, you can reach out to me because a lot of you already have. <laughs> but, um, I try to share with you different things, stuff like that, but I find it so sad that y'all are so abused behind the scenes and y'all suffer in silence. A lot of you guys suffer in silence. Y'all are really hurting. And I feel really bad because... It's like y'all don't have the strength to fight back. And I understand that when you are a straight man and now you're being called gay, and you know gay means that you like somebody who looks like you that don't look like you, you just can't connect it. And society's beating you up. Just think of that said about that little child. Not saying go out to shoot people up, but at the end of the day, stop trying to have conversations with people with their minds are already closed. If a door is already closed, why are you sitting up there trying to get reasoning you just need to leave. If they close the door, look at it as God saying, no, 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 go somewhere else because this person is tarnished. Look at that door as that. Don't sit there and say, well, let me just explain my position. You don't have to explain nothing. Because at the end of the day, even though you may have tried to explain something, when their mind is made up, it's made up. No matter what you say, that way if you walk away and say, yeah, you want me to believe that. Don't waste your time on dark souls. There has nothing there but emptiness. And all they need to do is pull the light out of you to make you join them in the darkness that they spread around the world and act like they close their lives, their eyes on suicide and people killing themselves and all the murders that they helped create. But at the end of the day, they sit back and look, act like they had no part of the destruction of so many different people. So why are you trying to breathe light in the dead souls? You need to just get away. Stick around your own. Stick around the ones that are like you. You do. You all gonna die one day. At least you can say you can you lived your life the way you wanted to, and that no regrets. Cause I'm gonna tell you something. When you get sick, and your body's around, and you can't do what you used to do before you could get to that position, that's when you start thinking. Sometimes you have to be broken all the way down just to build yourself all the way back up. And then once you build yourself back up, you're gonna see a lot of people that didn't rock with you the way you thought. At the end of the day, people gonna call you any names, no matter what. People call everybody names, and it's just sad. But that's just the realism of it all. And I understand the black community; we are the worst on our own. Tons of times, we always talk about other, but yet still, we are suffering from colorism within the own community. And at the end of the day, you're still black, no matter what the hell you call yourselves. But unfortunately, I'm not the band aid for this community. I'm only the one who's trying to shed light on keeping a lot of people alive. Anyway, like I said before, subscribe to my channel because out there's the Instagram button. If you follow me, I'll follow back. Comment below. That's you. I love you. And thank you for watching, Cancer. All right, now. Come on, baby. Let's go on and stop. Like I said before, subscribe to my channel at the top. There's the Instagram button. If you follow me, I'll follow you back. Comment below how you feel about this. I feel like a lot of trans men feel like we abandoned them and stuff. And yet, and still, they're getting called gay and also being attacked. We have to show our support for all men that is fighting to be with us. Comment below. Like this video and share it everywhere you can. Love you. Love you.